Uh, you're the commissioner. Who's responsible? You conducted the investigation. Who was responsible? I don't have that name, sir. I tell well, you. Why don't you have that? Name? I that I was originally. Have you asked anybody? Yes, I asked. Who, in who the, did you ask? I asked. I don't have that name either. I'll be glad to provide those names. Then let him answer Mark. the question. Mr. Uh, Levin, it's my time. Washington State's time. Who did you ask? I asked the senior technical advisor. And, and what's the Nancy. senior tech technical advisor's name? Nancy Marks. And what did Nancy tell you? Who's responsible? I, that I don't remember, to be honest with you. You don't remember again. <laughs> oh. Who was responsible? Simple question asked repeatedly of the acting IRS commissioner this morning. No answers provided. Jay Sekulow is the chief counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, and as I mentioned before the break, got this started, was following this and pursuing questions on this long before any of us were paying attention to it, because he had many clients who were saying, Jay, I'm telling you, I'm being harassed by the IRS with questions wanting to know if any member of my family is ever going to run for office just because I'm applying for status as a social welfare uh, organization. I want to pick up where, where we just left off. Who was responsible? He could barely get him to say that he talked to Nancy, uh, and then Nancy told him who was responsible, but he can't remember who it was? Well, I've got the names of who were the agents involved in this. I don't know why they're having such a difficult time determining this, because they all sent out letters, Megan, and I've got them. And because I've got 27 clients, I've got them from four different offices. So we know the agents' names. They know the agents' names. They know the supervisors' names. They know the group managers' names. I, I worked. Look, my first job out of law school was in chief counsel's office of the IRS. I was a trial attorney in a regional office. Our client was the tax-exempt group. This is nonsense. Miller's testimony was embarrassing. Uh, of course he knows who this is. And how come Lois Lerner is still in charge of the IRS tax exempt? Has anybody asked that question? This is Why the group, is she still there? This is the group that, that oversaw directly uh, the unit, right. determinations unit, so-called, in Cincinnati, that was giving everyone such a hard time. And th that group answered ultimately right. to Lois. Right. And she still has her job. And the, her former, the person that had a job before her, who was there during 2010 when this criteria was developed, she's now heading up the Affordable Care Act provision of the Internal Revenue Code or the Hall IRS's Ingram. service requirement. She's now the agent, uh, right. the person in charge. So the person, scary. so the person, Sarah Hall Ingram, who we believe was the one overseeing this program while it was being carried out against, right. the, against the conservatives, has now been effect, uh, effectively been in, in, in char in, placed in charge of the. Obamacare, Obamacare. Uh, unit, <laughs> yep. responsible for dealing with people's information. So that's a little chilling. And Lois Lerner, let's yep. talk about her because she got a lot of press today. Why hasn't she been fired? Because they, they accused her of repeatedly lying to Congress. They said she had testified to them recently. They said she came before Congress on May 8th, Wednesday, May 8th, and was asked in part about these items that we've been, you know, that the IG was investigating didn't say anything about them, didn't offer any truthful testimony right. on those subjects. And then two days later on Friday, she, now they've admitted, planted a question at a public event planted. that she was attending uh, and, ha and had somebody ask her about it. And then she comes out and says, oh, yeah, we did it, but we didn't do it with any malice and um, that we're sorry. Yeah, it's not partisan. She also said these are, weren't, and so did Miller today. Th this isn't partisan activity. It's just we were looking at what the positions these groups advocated were, which sounds pretty partisan to me. But that's about as good. And I thought you were fantastic yesterday when the president made his response to a question by not answering that question when it came to does anybody at the White House know about this before the White House counsel was uh, let know of this at the end of April, April 22nd. And the president said, let me specifically answer the question. And he says, no, but I didn't know of the IG report until the IG report was released which was not the question the Bloomberg reporter asked. Megan, this is really getting bad. The president issues his question or response, which is uh, troubling to say the least, coming from the commander-in-chief of the United States and the pre our president, our chief executive officer. Then you got the head of the IRS, can't remember anybody's name, and the person that's in charge with tax exempt is still in charge of tax exempt, even though she oversaw this disaster, which includes, and the Attorney General of the United States may well include criminal activity. So, and even uh, the Inspector General say they have to take a new look at the criminal activity aspect of this, which they did not in their first report. Then the, you've got this scathing letter that Ms. Lerner received from uh, some other members of Congress saying, you came, you came up here repeatedly uh, and provided testimony to us, to us that we just do not believe was true. We think you've misled us repeatedly. And they said especially troubling is the fact that in June of 2011, 
nearly a year before you provided answers that we now believe were misleading to this committee, you were briefed on the fact that there was a be on the lookout memo within the IRS for any conservative or Tea Party sounding groups. Yeah. Uh, and, and you had instructed that that be changed, but when we asked you about it, it you, you didn't mention anything about it, you didn't disclose it, you didn't tell anybody, and that's how Miller sounded today, too, that he had been told, but he refused to testify about it when asked by the Congress. It's like the IRS believed if they didn't tell Congress about it, it would somehow go away. Yeah, well, you know, be on the lookout list sounds pretty uh, direct and targeted to me. And by the way, Miller said today uh, the acting commissioner now leaving his office three weeks earlier than he was planning, so that was no big revelation by the president. He said he does. He objected to the word targeting. Well, the inspector general did not because he used it at least 16 times inside of their report mm -hmm. uh, with regard to what the IRS was doing. And targeting in and of itself is partisan. You're going after a particular okay, group. Okay, but that's I want to ask you about that. I want to yeah. ask you about that. Yeah. I'm going to carry you over because we're coming up on a break. But here, right. the, but the inspector general testified today. He didn't say, look, this wasn't political. Yeah. He said, at this point, we have nothing to contradict the IRS's assertions that it wasn't political. But he also admitted this wasn't right. a comprehensive investigation. This was just an audit, basically, right. that he performed. And there seems to be another investigation going on right now. But I want to ask you about this. If this was not political, if these groups were not chosen for political reasons, what other reason could there be? Jay Seculo is back with me now. So I want to pick up where we left off. There, the, the IG, again, testified not that this was not political, but that he had nothing at this point to contradict the IRS's assertions to him that this was not based on political reasons. So I ask you, Jay, right. if this was not, if the targeting of, of conservatives, repeated targeting over a period of 18 plus months and then it resumed later, so let's call it two years, ra rounded up. If it wasn't for political reasons, what other possible reason could there have been? Uh, none. Uh, of course it has to be political because look who was targeted. Uh, you had conservative organizations, Tea Party groups, Patriot groups, uh, conservative Jewish organization Z Street because of their position with regard to Israel, which was contrary to what the president's position was. Can you imagine if this came out, say, September of uh, last year before the election, that the IRS had specifically targeted individual conservative organizations and had leaked information to some of those organizations' opponents in courtrooms? Uh, that in and of itself is criminal activity. He so what you've that. got here, Second and I think the... Yeah. Yeah, I know, but no, he no, he didn't say that it was not leaked. He, he said, said he'd be he would be outraged he'd be shocked. if it's shocked. Well, I'm a little shocked that they targeted, you know, conservative groups, although after doing these cases for 24 months, nothing shocks me anymore. And uh, the inspector general is the one that used the word targeting, by the way. So I think the reality is, Megan, this is nothing but politics. But there's, I believe that the attorney general saying that he's going to look at the criminal aspect of it is fine. But now you've got the FBI investigating the IRS. And in the meantime, let me just say, I still have 10 clients that are waiting for their exemption, and we sent a letter on Monday to the IRS acting commissioner and to the chief counsel's office and to these agents saying, grant the exemptions already, no response, so next week we go to federal court. This business about, now this was, you know, one congressman, uh, Congressman Brady, talking about what, what one of his constituents went through. But, you know, yeah. you heard him saying, is this still America? When he said that his client uh, applied for tax-exempt status in December of 2010, and then, I'm sorry, in, in July of 2010, which is just months after this whole right. thing was born, so it was in full-fledged by July of 2010, right. uh, that he, she, right. she gets visited by the FBI terrorism unit, four FBI inquiries, unscheduled audits by OSHA, right. ATF two times. She'd never been audited before. I mean, now, that, that's, that's his allegation based on what his constituent told him. But, Jay, I mean, if that yep. is true then this goes much deeper and much higher and gets to a much more disturbing level than we know today. If we got the terrorism unit looking at, you know, potential Tea Party tax-exempt individuals and har harassing them or questioning them, but they didn't bother to, you know, follow up on the first uh, Boston bomber when he went over to Dagestan, uh, that tells you something. But I will tell you this, Megan, I've got a case right now where a client challenged the uh, uh, HHS mandate and affordable health care, part of Obamacare. We've got an injunction on it. He was audited four years ago or three years ago. No changes. Everything was fine. It's a fairly large company. After we got the injunction, surprise, surprise, a new notice of audit. Again, they got audited. So I'm hoping that this is mere coincidence, but at this point, I assume nothing's coincidental. And the fact is, we are learning today of many organizations, conservative organizations, not only that were either slowed up in the process of getting their exemption, but those that already had it were audited. 
and uh, extensively during the same period of time, 2010, 2011, 2012. Their, their defense. Uh, Billy Graham, Franklin Graham said that too. Their defense seems to be uh, okay, he said in his opening statement, Miller did, that we made mistakes. And then he admitted to abuses, but he said we made mistakes. And they, he said, "Look, we, it was 2010. We were getting an influx of uh, applications to be the, this tax-exempt organiza yeah. organization called the 501c4, and so we had to have some way of dealing with all of them." But I want to point this out because there is another piece to this, Jay. He said we were getting a lot of complaints about said organizations and whether or not they really were political, and that's what the IRS said. I've got it right here in the IG report and their response to the IG. They said, we also received numerous referrals from the public media right. watchdog groups and members of Congress alleging that specific Section 501c4 organizations were engaged in political campaign activity to an impermissible extent. And so I ask you, to what extent do we look to, in particular those on the Democratic side of the aisle who are, who are trying to light a fire under the IRS to go after these groups? Well, Chuck Schumer, Al Franken, uh, asked for these kind of reviews and they got them. So now they don't like the result because the IRS is acknowledging and apologizing for what they call it, poor customer service today? Well, it's like returning an item to J.C. Penney or Sears. I mean, give me a break. This isn't customer service. If you file a false return with the IRS, you don't get to say, I'm sorry, you go to jail. So this, is, this whole thing is, is absurd. It is politically motivated. That's becoming clear by the moment. And as more of this becomes uh, under light, I think it's going to, frankly, Megan, we probably have just not even scratched the surface of what was going on. And by the way, in 2010, applications for 501c4, look at the IG's report, were actually down. They put this in place before there was, quote, the surge of applications. And if there was a surge of applications, ask questions that are relevant to the determination of status, not what books you read, who's in your membership list, who donates you money, and have you ever thought about running for political office or anybody in your family ever thought mm -hmm. about that? You raise a good That'd point. A good way to start. You raise a good point about what the IRS does to the normal American citizen when they find themselves in the IRS crossing. And that was a point right. made very eloquently by one of the congressmen we saw today. It led to applause on the House, uh, on the committee floor. We will show that to our viewers in just a minute. Jay, thank you. Thanks, Mike.